Good morning. You're joining with ITN News and I am Pankaj Kulutunga. First, the news headlines. Sri Lanka officially withdraws from the UNHRC controversial resolutions. The president points out the need to provide fish to consumers at reasonable prices. Security in the Bandaranaika International Airport has been beefed up. Over 80,000 confirmed coronavirus cases reported globally with over 2,700 deaths. And now for the news in detail. Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardena has said that Sri Lanka has become a chessboard amid the po global political crisis. Addressing the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, he officially informed the Sri Lankan government's decision to withdraw from the process of co-sponsorship of resolutions against Sri Lanka. However, he further stated that although Sri Lanka withdraws from the resolution, it will bound to safeguard human rights under the aegis of UN Human Rights Commission. I would like to state with pride that since May 2009, not a bullet has been fired in the name of separatist movement in Sri Lanka. The deliberate polarization it sought to cause through trade-off that resulted in Sri Lanka's foreign policy being reduced to a zero-sum game made my country a pawn on the chessboard of global politics. It is seen that the dictated changes in the country pursuant to 30 stroke 1 undermine the national interest, compromise national security, including weakening the national intelligence operations and related safeguards, which are deemed to have contributed to the lapses that resulted in Easter Sunday attacks in April 2019. As President Rajapaksa stated in his address at the 72nd commemoration of the Independence Day of Sri Lanka, we will always defend the right of every citizen to participate in political and governance processes through his or her elected representatives. In this context that I wish to place on record, Sri Lanka's decision to withdraw from the co-sponsorship of the resolution 40 stroke 1 on promoting reconciliation, accountability and human rights in Sri Lanka, which also incorporates and builds on preceding resolutions 30 stroke 1 of October 2015 and 34 stroke 1 of March 2017. Mr. President, notwithstanding withdrawing from the co-sponsorship of this resolution, Sri Lanka remains committed to achieving the goals set by the people of Sri Lanka on accountability, human rights, towards sustainable peace and reconciliation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Meanwhile, High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, is scheduled to address the 43rd session of the Human Rights Council today. It is expected that a report on Sri Lanka will be presented at this meeting. Minister Gunavardhana will also respond to the oral update on behalf of the Sri Lankan government by the High Commissioner today. President Gotabe Rajapaksha instructed officials to take measures for the consumers to purchase fish at reasonable prices while safeguarding the fisheries industry. President issued this directive during a meeting convened to discuss matters related to multi-day fishing boat owners held at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. While emphasizing the importance of involving both the exporter as well as the boat owners, when planning new measures aimed at an export-oriented market, the President advised the officials to take immediate steps to prevent illegal fishing. Representatives of fisheries societies said that the export companies only purchase fish caught by vessels owned by the latter. Meanwhile, Deputy Solicitor General R.M. Sobita Rajakaruna was sworn in as an appeal court judge before the President at the Presidential Secretariat. The Department of Immigration and Emigration has beefed up security in the Bandaranaika International Airport. 
This decision was taken in a bid to intensify the security and to counter all suspicious movements. According to a senior official in charge of the department, two special units were introduced as a necessity felt by the authorities following the unexpected Easter Sunday attacks and to monitor the arrival of suspicious individuals who could be linked to terrorism. The first unit established was a risk assessment center that would pre-screening of all the electronic travel authorization applications sent online by any foreigner who wishes to obtain a visa to enter Sri Lanka. The second being a border surveillance unit that would actively engage inside the airport and observe the movements of the arriving and departing passengers. Until recent times, the major role of the immigration and emigration officials stationed at the airport was somewhat confined to their counters at the arrival and departure terminals. The provost sailors of the Sri Lanka Navy have been deployed to control the traffic jam within the municipal limits of the Colombo city. Following the process of deploying military personnel for controlling traffic and in view of providing the necessary assistance to the Sri Lanka police for controlling the rapidly peaking traffic in the Colombo city, Navy provost sailors have been deployed for traffic duties. The measure carried out in coordination with the Modera police has been in effect at present. Through this initiative, it is expected to control the traffic efficiently and to minimize the wastage of man hours while reducing air pollution. The Sri Lanka Navy, in coordination with Excise Station Department in Shankane, recovered a stock of Kerala cannabis at the Thambalai area in Point Pedro. Along with the cannabis, a suspect and a motorbike too were apprehended by the Navy. The arrest was made at a joint search conducted by the Navy and excise station in Shankane. Reportedly, 21 kilograms and 510 grams of Kerala cannabis have been found while hidden in a shrubby land. The suspect has been identified as a resident of Anthonipuram in Palali. Further investigations is conducted by excise station of Shankane. That's all we have for you today. Join with ITN News tomorrow. Signing off, I'm Pankaj Kulutunga. Have a good day.